You all know I love tractors, right? I think we all love tractors, but there are certain things that we hate about tractors. And for the folks out there that are still tractor shopping, they haven't grown to hate these things yet and they have some unrealistic expectations. And I don't like the idea of overselling something. So I want to kind of level that playing field a little bit. Let's talk about the ugly stuff about tractors, the things that are no good. Let's sum it up real quick here. I don't know, five, six, seven, eight things, whatever we come up with, let's go through it quick. First up, hydraulic flow, all right? You see these extra hydraulics right here? You'd love to be able to run a loader mounted post hole digger, for example, right? Or all sorts of other hydraulic attachments that you see like on the skid steer, but you can't. Well, sometimes you sort of can, but they're gonna operate really slow. And that's the, the case with a loader mounted hydraulically driven post hole digger on a tractor. Hydraulic flow is just so low. The GPMs that you have in there are just not gonna spin anything very fast. And I think a lot of that's related to how tractors were designed originally, what they were designed for. They weren't designed like a skid steer was to be able to use hydraulic motor driven attachments. They were designed to use a PTO type of power, all right? And so that's a simple, cheap way to operate an attachment, but that means you can't use hydraulically driven attachments on your machines very well. Common question folks ask, you know, I need to get a tractor to move around, you know, a pallet of, uh, of pellets or maybe uh, bags of salt or something like that. Say a 2,000 pound skid. Can I get by with like a Kubota B series or a John Deere 1025R? No, you can't, nowhere near that. And so that's really disappointing knowing that your tractor can't lift what seems to be not that insurmountable for a machine to do, but it is for these smaller tractors. Not only that, they can't lift it very high either. And you need to get a really big tractor like this bigger Kubota M4 here to be able to lift a 2,000 pound pallet safely. Now you can't get by with like a L6060 as well or a John Deere 4066R or something in that size range typically. But the point being is that you look at these smaller tractors and think they can do lots of big jobs. And while they can chip away at certain things, a real limitation is loader lift capacity, three point lift capacity and lift height as well. So it can really be a buzzkill to know, man, that one machine is not gonna do everything I need to do. Modern tractors today are just too tippy and too light, all right? I don't know what changed because tractors used to be heavy. <laughs> they did, they used to have a lot of weight. And that new Summit tractor actually has a lot of weight, comes loaded with liquid ballast in the tires and, and it feels very stable. You know, but the, the John Deere, the Kubota, most tractors out there these days are very narrow. All right, and so if you're on anything besides perfectly flat ground, you can see how high I'm sitting up and on a really narrow machine. And we actually have wheel spacers on here. Uh, we did that just to promote safety. And you can get wheel spacers or dual wheels even on smaller tractors as well to increase that stability. You get to a bigger tractor like the John Deere 4 Series, like the Kubota M4, that kind of thing. They start to feel a lot more stable side to side, even with a cab on there. But it's a scary feeling for a new operator to to feel that uneasiness, you know, when they're tipping side to side and rocking a little bit. And same thing happens when you're lifting with the front end loader, the rear end's really light. Now we got a big backhoe on here, so that's really good counterweight. You may still want to load your tires with liquid ballast, get wheel weights on there, that kind of thing too. If you don't have a backhoe, make sure you have a real heavy attachment on there and get the Versa bracket and suitcase weights, a ballast box, all sorts of ballast weights. So when you're lifting up heavy loads, with the bucket, with the grapple, with the forks, whatever it is, you're nice and stable, planted to the ground. You get your job done and get home safely. While we're talking about safety, try to remember, keep your ROPS bar up. You can fold these down, but keep them up whenever you possibly can. Always reference your manual on the right procedure to do that with. If you're gonna have your ROPS up, you typically want your seatbelt on. If your ROPS happens to be down, you typically want your seatbelt off so you can hop off really quick and get out of the way. They had a great visual demonstration at the farm show down in Louisville on just how important, how effective a ROPS bar is. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Storage space, you know, not only storage space for the tractor, but all the attachments and well, I mean, I got a huge row here. I got another row wrapping around the backside. And I have several tractors, you know, because I use these for videos and I show you guys different projects and different sizes of tools that go on all the different tractors and yada, yada. Takes up a lot of space, but even with just one tractor, those attachments really start to 
well, they take up a lot of real estate and to find space and a way to store that inside can be really challenging. And some folks have got really creative with the tiered and kind of rack storage that they've had. And that's an awesome way to do it if you can. It can be tedious to potentially have to get all the attachments back down when you need to use them. But man, it is, it's something that kind of eats at me. You know, I'm glad my tractors are able to be inside now for a while at our other property. We had no indoor storage. And so the machines were sitting outside and the attachments, that really stunk. And for the most part, you know, this stuff is going to work even if it's sitting out in the weather, but it's still, the sun's going to do damage to it, right? With just sitting out there and all the plastic and, and uh, rubber components and even the paint. It's going to fade that too. And, you know, other seasons, the, the, the rain and the snow and the ice and everything else, it just, it's not good for it. But, you know, I don't know what you're going to do about it. Tires, man. The tires are just trash, you know? And I just did another video recently showing how ineffective these things are in the snow they're just they don't get good traction on snow and in ice they're great for paved surfaces they're going to last a long time but if you're in mud if you're in a lot of different situations these are about the worst tire you can have but they're the most commonly found tractor tire that's out there in the compact tractor world these kind of migrated over from the skid steer world for some reason i, I don't know why but but they did they're the r4 industrial tread pattern thick bars on there and again longevity is probably the best thing I could say about it. You'll have folks out there that don't have any issue with it, but you have a lot of folks that do have issue with it, and it is expensive to replace tires. Sometimes, depending on what you want to go to, you have to replace the wheels as well. It just gets, well, it's just a whole deal, right? So I, I don't like that part about tractors. I don't like that part about it being so, oh, normalized, I guess. In, seeing these tires on the tractors and thinking that's the way to go. I just feel like it does a disservice to a lot of folks out there looking for their tractor that could really use a different tire pattern. Picking the right tractor, you know, that can be a real challenge. And that's part of the thing I hate about tractors is, is it's so hard. Every set of circumstances is different. You know, every set of projects and, and terrain and application is, is always different. And it's not like a car, right? Or whether you have an SUV or a, a car or a truck, for most of us, we just need something to commute, right? To get from point A to point B. And yeah, we got a tow and that's a whole different animal. But with a tractor, it kind of gets back to that, that lift capacity thing, right? Maybe you need a small tractor because it's great to be nimble around the house, but then the one big job that you have for it is having to unload you know, a, a flatbed trailer, I don't know, three times a year or do round bales or something like that. That something is just way too big of a task for a small tractor to do while everything else would be perfect for the small tractor. And there's just oftentimes no one size fits all. You have to make a priority list of what's the most important things, what checks the most boxes and kind of work your way into the right tractor that way. So I kind of, I hate that about tractors because it's, um, you don't know until you have it. And at that point it's too late. And so that's why my channel, all sorts of other channels in the tractor space out there have really come a long ways, I think, in showing folks what each size tractor can do, you know, the right size tools on there, the different terrain, the different applications. And so do your, all your research that way. You know, it's about the best thing you can do. Maybe you get lucky, you can rent a tractor like at a Home Depot or a rental yard and, and bring it back home for a weekend or a week and do some projects and see how it does for you. Um, that's one way if you get lucky doing it on a small tractor, but seldom are you gonna be able to do that with a larger machine. And kind of on that note, the darn prices have got out of control. They are just sky high through the roof. They're never coming back down, right? We did a video recently about the inflation, what's changed in the last three years. It's absolutely crazy. And I think the rate of increase, you know, of inflation is gonna come down, it's gonna slow down, but it's not getting any cheaper. And it's, it's almost, you know, becoming out of reach for a lot of folks that, need these machines to do it. And, and I don't know the right solution. I don't have the right answer other than, you know, trying to really be savvy on the used market and see if you can find a really good deal. I think they do pop up from time to time, um, but you have to know how to compare it to new pricing, the, the options and the features that are on there, how many hours are good and bad, how it's taken care of, all that kind of thing. And that's part of the reason I got out of the used tractor game for now is because the market is too unstable. But uh, I feel for you guys out there. I don't have a good answer on that one, but it sure does stink. I would say though, as a bit of encouragement, you know, I don't want to be all doom and gloom is, is to, well, we did a video on this recently too, and onto how you can use the projects you have to pay for your tractor, so to speak, versus hiring out this work to be done by contractors. And if you can justify it that way, you know, you have to get a bit more creative, maybe look at a more long-term plan. If you're going to be at your place for five, 10 or, or more years, then you have that many more projects potentially where you can recoup that investment. And of course, at the end of the day, you can always sell your tractor off. You're not gonna recoup every dollar that you put into it, 
but you're not just spending say 30 grand on a tractor and attachments and then it's all gone right in in five years you can i don't know maybe still re recuperate 15 20 000 maybe a little bit more than that even it just depends how much you use it so on that note make sure you look at our other videos we have all sorts of them helping you pick the right size tractor showing you attachments at work showing you things to do or not to do with your tractor hit subscribe down below to follow along and when you're looking for your tractor attachments we would love to help you out give us a shot at goodworkstractors.com we sell and ship all over the country every day of the week prices include shipping rewards and financing too i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon